Hello, hello. Today is Friday, January 15th, and this is Friday Sews. I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel. Friday Sews is a chance for me to share what I'm working on in the sewing related world and a little bit of a life update. And you get to share with me what you're working on in the comments. I love when we can connect like that. Today's video includes some new sewing patterns, progress on a couple sewing projects, information on a couple sewing challenges or so alongs take advantage of the new year sale at somethingdelightful.com they offered bug patterns for $5.99 each if i recall correctly and the other brands mccall's butterick and quick sew for $2.99 i don't remember because i only bought some bug patterns and that's because i just live almost an hour away from the nearest joanne so it's very inconvenient for me to just drive over quickly and pick up patterns when they have Vogue patterns on sale. That price also included the out of print patterns. So I picked up just a couple. I picked up 9114, which was published in 2015. This is out of print and I purchased it because of the detail on that little pant leg. I, yes, could probably figure it out myself, but it's a lot easier when it's right there. And I would probably sew that skirt too. That's pretty cute. I plan to sew it out of a linen for the upcoming spring and summer months. I also picked up a jacket pattern. I don't know why I'm so attracted to jacket patterns when I live in an environment that's rather warm, but I just like this designer's designs. This was published in 2019 and I can't believe it's out of print already. I bought it because of those sleeves. Aren't those fabulous? Statement sleeves are still trending. And I love a good statement sleeve. Out of print pattern that I purchased. This one is from 2018, is 9335. It's really difficult to see what this looks like. On the website, they do have it made up and shown on a model. It just looks kind of blah on the cover, but I love that little tunic. I think for my lifestyle and the weather that we have, this would be a good pattern. Also purchased three fairly new patterns. I purchased 1756 Sandra Betsina. This, this is a duster pattern. On the back it says duster or dress and it has view A and view B. And, and that just feels so silly to even say there's two views because one view has tiny little ruffle on the collar and that's the only difference. So just another Sandra Betsina design. This is 1695 and I purchased it for this short sleeve view with that great big bow. I know that bow can be polarizing, but I like it. I think I might try this out of one of my many silky polyester prints. I also purchased Vogue 1693. I would not sew it as shown on the pattern cover envelope. It's just too fancy, too much like a wedding, perhaps, like a garden wedding. But I thought it could be really cute in maybe a floral chalet or even mixing prints if I could find the right fabric. And it has separate cut pieces for A, B, C, and D. That's always a plus in my opinion. To go to Barnes and Noble. I love bookstores. Don't obviously with COVID haven't had a chance to really browse in them any longer. And shopping online just isn't the same. There's just something about, I love to browse the magazines. I love to just browse the books, look at the new releases. I love to read. I wanted to see if they were carrying the Berta Style magazine. I had seen one in the past, but this was pre-COVID. I do get asked frequently when I share a Berta Style magazine pattern, where do you buy a pattern? I have a subscription. I get my subscription from Roltek, Roltek, R-O-L-T-E-K.com. I do a yearly subscription. It's not cheap, but I love the Burtis Town Pattern Magazines. I go back to them. I'll leave that information in the description box for you below. I've had success contacting them via email. It does take a little bit of time, so just be patient with them. But if you're interested in pursuing a, de a description, if you're interested in pursuing a subscription to the magazine, that's the best place to go. That was a long explanation to tell you that I didn't see Berta Style magazine, but I did see this. 
Fiber Mood. This is a new to me sewing pattern magazine. As I was browsing the magazines, I overheard one of the associates on a phone with a customer explaining that they still had their magazines up pre-Christmas and did not have the new ones in yet. So perhaps next time I go, I will find a newer copy of this. Let me give you a quick look at what patterns you get in this particular one. In last week's Friday Sews video, I shared some fabric with you that I was planning on sewing into a blouse. The fabric is from Minerva.com and I was hoping that I was going to like the pattern that I chose. I chose 9347 Vogue, which looks like a coat, doesn't it? I bought this thinking it was a jacket, but they describe it as a blouse, so I thought I will try it in a blouse fabric. It's right here and I am really pleased with how it is turning out. Once it's done, I'll have a blog post on Minerva.com and I'll be sure to share the final version with you in a monthly makes video. This week, I discovered two Instagram sewing challenges. Well, one's a challenge, one's a sew along. The first one is called Sewing Away the Blues. And this is hosted by the popular YouTubers, Viv Mom Sews and Joy Bernhardt. I'm sure most of you already know who they are. I'll link them in the description below. This is a really easy one. All you have to do is choose fabric that has blue in it, sew something, post it to Instagram, and use the hashtag JoyVivSewBlues by February 13th, and you have a chance to be in a random drawing for a $100 gift card or a $50 gift card to Fabric Mart. Pretty cool, huh? I'll add links below so you can get to their channels to learn all the details. The other one isn't a challenge, it's just a sew along. And this is being hosted by Lindsay with Inside the Hem. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with her YouTube channel also. On Instagram over the past couple of years, there had been a sew along called Sew Your View. And the host of that one announced at the beginning of the year that they were not going to continue it for a number of reasons. Lindsay decided to continue it, but in a slightly different way. It's called hashtag sew together. I think it's a really fun idea and I'm planning on participating. Of course, it will always depend on what pattern is chosen. I like the one that was chosen for January. It is the George and Ginger 40K suede top and it's free. I'll put a link in my description. We can go to get this pattern. The one thing I will tell you is you do have to sign up for an account. I understand why companies have to do that. I just, I hate doing it. I hate that I have to create an account with a password and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, I went ahead and did it. I think this is a really cute top. I think it would be a fairly easy top and it would be a fun way to sew together things on my sewing plate. I'm working on a sweatshirt for my daughter who lives in the northern climate where it's still very cold and will be cold for quite some time. Another thing I sewed this week is this vest. This is from a Sandra Betzina pattern 1375 and this is from 2013. 2013 or 2015. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't tell you for sure. I am sure it is out of print. I have a question for you. Is this handkerchief hemline really dated? I still love it and I'm hoping my girlfriend does too. I don't know if it's dated or not. I guess if it is, we will just look like outdated old ladies when we wear our fabulous vests. This fabric was ordered from Super Textiles on Etsy. I didn't look at the description that close and it's rather sheer. So it actually works really well for this vest. It was a pain to sew. 
oh my goodness, all these little eyelash fibers all over my sewing room. I had to be really careful not to get them into my eyes. I had to clean that sewing machine and it may have been a pain to sew, but I think the texture of the fabric really adds to what really is just a basic vest. I'll let you know if she likes it. I hope I can get her to send me a picture of her wearing it and I will share that. And I'm also working on a collab with the lovely Jen of Today in Jen's Sewing Room. Jen, of course, has already made progress on hers. I'm the hold up on the collab, hoping to have it done next week so we can share it with all of you. And you know, with having COVID and being so sick for a while, just pushed all my schedule behind. Sewing is fun. Sewing's my hobby. I'm not gonna stress out and Jen is so sweet. She's like, yeah, it's okay, don't worry, yeah. Ooh, that was a little Minnesota yeah there. <laughs> anyway, she's so sweet. She said, yes, it's fine. I had to finish up a couple Christmas gifts. I didn't have to, I wanted to finish up a couple Christmas gifts before I started on this collaboration. So watch for that soon too. Also mentioned last week how everyone was all abuzz about the potential snow we were going to get. We did indeed get snow. We had three inches here and it was that heavy wet stuff. If you're from the Northern States that gets a lot of snow, you know what I mean. It's that stuff that's perfect for snowballs and snowmen. I finally had a chance to wear my pink faux fur jacket that I had sewn. And it was also really fun. Somebody let me know that McCall's posted it on their Facebook page and their Instagram page. So that was my two seconds of faith for Friday sews for this week. I do not have a lot of time this weekend or the upcoming week for a lot of sewing. We'll see what I can get done. So I'm not making any plans. It's gonna be whatever pops up that I have some time and it strikes my fancy. Would love to hear your sewing projects for the next week. Leave them in the comments below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Until next time, I do hope you have a blessed day and happy sewing.